Yeah, you know, Pop, there is a God sometimes where you actually practice offense, passing the ball, playing together, and it happens in a game. Uh, I don't know our record. How many games we played? You know, six. So we played, it took us a, a scrimmage and exhibition in six games. And in the last half, we finally actually played as one on the offensive end. Uh, in all seriousness, it's just the hardest part of basketball, trying to get uh, kids to, to play, five guys to play as one in sync and sharing the ball. Um, and uh, when you do it, it's a beautiful thing. The game's fun to watch. Uh, I, believe, I believe some fans probably get sick of one guy dribbling, seeing a high ball screen, and uh, one guy trying to take a shot or make a play every possession. We try to try and do everything we can to be a motion offense team. So uh, it's a work in progress, and it's a never-ending work. Uh, but yeah, I was really happy with our ball movement, and the results obviously showed in, uh, with our shooting percentage against David Lipscomb, especially in the second half. Well, this is a, obviously another great team you're playing. You mentioned recently that's a hard place to play. Talk about that. And also Don't know. I've been told it's the hardest place in the Big 12 to play. Okay. Um, so talk about their yeah, I'm more concerned with their players. Uh, they think they, uh, they've got the preseason Big 12 Player of the Year, uh, Monty Morris, and uh, he's led the nation or been close to it and assisted turnover his whole career. He's much more of a scorer now. Uh, and then Deontay Burton has kind of taken over George Niang's role uh, of a versatile guy that can score inside and out. Uh, really believes in himself offensively, too. He, he's a He's an impressive guy, but they have, all, they have shooters. So uh, they have four double figure scores that are all veterans. Um, at least one, I think two of those are fifth year seniors and Burton and Naz Long. Naz may be a six year guy. Um, so they're, just, they're a veteran team with tremendous talent. Uh, they don't, they're not the biggest team in the world. I would say, you know, if they, if they maybe had a, a 6'10 shot blocker that was a you know, a real veteran player, they might be the best team in the country. Yet I, I mean, saw some numbers that they rebound really well. They're aggressive, tough kids. Uh, they have rebound, they definitely have rebounded the ball well. I think what I would tell you though, the most underrated thing about them is their defense. I think, uh, you know, obviously I have a relationship with Steve. We were both coached at Murray State. Um, both fortunate to live in God's country down in Murray. Uh, he's a great coach. I think he is an underrated defensive coach. And I think Iowa State is an underrated defensive team. I think they're giving up 36 and a half percent from the field. Man to man. They're a pack line defense team, uh, just like Xavier, Virginia, Arizona. Uh, and those type of teams, it's hard to get easy shots in a half court because uh, they guard the paint at all costs. Uh, you're going to have to make some shots. You, you have to move the ball to get it in the paint, move people, and you're also going to have to make some open shots. Or that pack line goes from 17 feet to about 15 feet, and it's really hard to get it in then. So uh, they, they also, they, they, they just do winning things. They, they all take charges. They all play help defense. So I just, I believe that Steve's, a, he's a very underrated defensive coach. He just happens to have some talented offensive players. Morris is a kid that you guys looked at a little bit out of high school. Was this something? Glad your memory goes that far back. <laughs> was this something you saw from him that the passing and, and his ability to run a team back when he was? Ah, he was all yeah. He was a great player uh, back when he was in. I believe he's a Flint guy. Uh, he, he was an underrated guy in high school. Uh, he's probably been underrated on the national scene his whole career. To be honest with you, a little bit surprised he wasn't able to go pro really after last season, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, I think it's just a great, you know, happy for the kid that he's now getting a recognition with the Big 12 Player of the Year. It's good to see guys that uh, stay four years get better. I think it would probably give him a better chance to be a pro that he stayed this year, but a very impressive player. Always finds the open man, but he's really added the jump shot, his ability to score. He's much better scorer than he was as a younger player, but he always finds the open man. It's it's early, obviously, and it's one game, but this could be one of those nice R RPI games, I guess. Is that enter into your thinking uh, at all? Um, not re not really, but yet the obviously the answer is yes. You know they're going to be a top twenty five team all season, uh, barring a week or two of who knows what happens. But that, they're they're just that kind of team. Uh, 
they got too many good veteran players. Steve's an excellent coach. Uh, they don't lose much at home. So, uh, you know, anybody I think that wins at Iowa State is going to uh, gonna, gonna get a lot of points for it. Burton, the type of guy you lose sleep at night trying to figure out how to guard him because he can score on smaller guys, bigger guys. I don't sleep much during the season, so there's no, <laughs> not much to lose. Uh, he's just a great offensive player. He reminds me of Kyle, he's just shorter. Left-handed, you know he's left-handed and you still can't stop him. He can score inside and out. He's got tremendous uh, belief in who he is as an offensive player. He doesn't let a miss shot bother him. Uh, and he's a sneaky good passer. He's a, he's, a, he's a tough, tough matchup. He's, he, he's a, another guy that has gotten better over his course of his career. Uh, that's proof that, you know, the guys that work hard, stay around, get better. Uh, he, he really has. I wasn't obviously here the other day. I, I read where Gary, Gary Clark went out. What's his uh, Gary sprained his ankle. He's day to day. Is it the same one as last year? Uh, it was left this time, so I think it was. I think one? it is, yeah. Day-to-day. Yeah. My kid, he's sprained his ankle. He's day-to-day. Where do you have to raise your level for this kind of game as you make making progress through this season? You know, this is a great game because you're not going to play a tougher game than this. So it's good to play it early, I think. So it's good for your kids to learn uh, what it takes to win a game like this, to be in it. Uh, you're going to have to play at an high, extremely high level. You can't turn the ball over. They're going to score. They're a great transition team. So if you turn it over, you're going to get blown out. Uh, you play a top 20 team on the road, turn the ball over, you'll get blown out. You want to win the game, you gotta, you, you've got to execute in the half court, uh, and then you've got to limit this team to one shot. They're extremely hard to play defense against. We would have won last year if we'd, have, if we'd have defensive rebounded the ball when we played them. Unfortunately, we didn't do it. So obviously, that's a something we're focusing on this week. We've got to become a better defensive rebounding team. I think we're somewhere around 12th in the nation in the Ken, the Ken Palm, the defensive efficiency. And I think, it's my opinion, if we rebounded better on the defensive end, we'd be in the top six or seven in the country on the defense. But we're not going to win this game if we give them second. If we give them extra possessions by turning the ball over or extra possessions off the backboard, we'll have no chance to win.